So basically, this is a anti seizure medication. Okay, it's anti seizure. So it's an anti seizure, and this is for maintenance. Okay, and they they are not um used in an active stage. Okay, so active or ongoing seizure, no, you don't use them. They are not. So they are not for uh, those kind of medication. You have to take it for a long time. So it's for maintenance. Um, it's used for tonic, tonic. That means the patient will contract. First, first they, they will stiff the, their body, then they will contract. So that's why it's called tonic, clonic. That's what it means. Uh, they stiff their body for a few seconds, and then they start contraction. Uh, and then that's the another type of seizure. These are a very narrow therapeutic range. It's 10 to 20. And uh, so you have to know that patient has to be monitored to check level. Um, and you can take up to like a three to 12 weeks, okay? Three to 12 weeks to get um, to therapeutic level. So that's why when patient come in, seizing, uh, having seizure, you don't use it because it's not going to do anything. It just takes a long time to build up in the system and do what it's supposed to do. Therefore, you don't give it to a patient who is having active seizure. Once again, if somebody is having active seizure, you use lorazepam. Lorazepam. Check the seizure lecture I did earlier on um, for that. You use lorazepam, not um, a phenyton. Okay? Key fat. Okay, key fat. Very important. Number one. They don't like proteins, okay? So if some patient is on two feet, two feeding, you need to stop it one to two hours before you give the med. Then after you give the med, wait one to two hours. Very important. One to two hours before and one to two hours after. Done. So if the patient is receiving two feet and you're, one, you want, you're about to give them phenytone, you have to stop the two feet Make sure an hour before you give the medication to that because it affects the absorption and therefore it will become a problem. Okay. Um, now, second, it's a sulfur drug. So sulfur drug, which you've seen me say that all the time. What it asks you is about photosensitivity, which you can teach the patient. You see selector apply. I told you all you guys, when you study, you can figure out what they are going to ask you. This will be a select or that apply, basically. What do you tell a patient who is taking phenytone? It's a sulfur drug, so you wear long sleeves, you cover your head, you put sunscreen, all those things. It's teaching, 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 and that's your select or that apply. Simple, simple way to study that way. Your SATA question can come from there. The other one is the most serious because it's a sulfur drug, it's shifting. Uh, Stevie Johnson syndrome, where they have a spot, uh, a red spot in their body, then before you realize, rash all over. And they go into sepsis. They will give you desquamilization, okay? Or the, the skin will be peeling off, peeling off of the skin. Yeah, that's what they mean. And that's a Stevie Johnson syndrome. That's B-sharp shock, normal. This is sepsis. So that's a B-sharp moment, okay? It's a B-sharp moment, I call it. So you gotta be careful about that, right? Then the three is other side effects, okay? The three I will focus on the other side effects. You have to know about it, okay? Um, it can cause confusion. That's not important, okay? Um, it can cause gait imbalance. So somebody is taking it and they have imbalance problem. So gait issues. Then it can cause nystagmus. Their eyes will move back and forth. So that is all related to gait. So fall risks. Is okay, okay, nystagmus. You have to worry about that. Um, and then, then they can have um hypotension. Okay, the blood pressure can goes down if you are giving it to IV. So this is when you go into IV. Most of the time, you take it by mouth. But if you are in a hospital, they're giving you through IV, it can cause hypotension. Yeah. The 
Number four is also a side effect, but I'm breaking them down so that you, you can see what I'm trying to do. Number four is it causes gingiva hyperplasia. Hyperplasia. What it means is it's a fancy way. Your gingiva is bigger now. It has swollen. Uh, it's, been, it's, it's growing faster than your teeth. So you, you see your body's out and then um, it, it's more prominent. And this is another teaching moment for select or that apply. What is that? Select or apply can be teaching, education, um, risk factor and all those things. It's the same thing, nothing has changed. So this patient, they got to take care of their gum well. So good dentition, And the most important thing is um, brush that they're going to use. Otherwise, they will bleed easily. But this is a common side effect. It's common, gingival hyperplasia. So number four is, is a common, common side effect. So that should not be a, this thing you pick. You said somebody is on this thing. What should you worry about? No, I'm not going to worry about gingival hyperplasia if I see... Stevie Johnson syndrome there. If I give you Stevie jo Johnson syndrome and gingival hyperplasia, yeah, you're not taking it. So this is common. Number four is, is a common side effect. And it happens, not everybody even get it. If you're taking more dose, your dose is very high. Okay, if you're taking like 500, greater than 500 milligram a day, and that's when they get it. So you provide oral hygiene, um, and it's very common, even young patients, so not even older patients. Uh, so common side effect, taking more than 500, and then if you have a young patient, all you need to do is to adjust the medication to help with that. Okay? Um, and that is fine. Now, um, let me clean something here. So, where is the eraser? Uh, I think the eraser is here. Let me clean this one here. Good. Now, let's go. So, then, then the fifth one, I want to talk about the fifth one, I'm breaking them down, is, is a teratogen. Okay? It's a teratogen, and it decreases the effect of um, oral contraception. So, if you take in it, and you're going to get pregnant, you got to use something else. We want we don't want you to get pregnant for the first place if you're taking that. That if we, we, we because of that, we are going to um make you we won't let you get pregnant. So what do you tell the patient? Teaching moment, select or that apply is what? Use a barrier method. So you can take it, the pill, but we need condom or IUD. IUD is the barrier method. You need something effective. Even though IUD is good, it's very effective. It's not a barrier. So if there's answer choice in IUD, I'll pick it. It's very effective compared to the pill because the, the medication decreases the effectiveness of the pill. Okay, it's by IUD is not the pill. So that is permanent. You take care of it. And the barrier method too will do that. So those are the things I want you to know. Then number six, that's why I separate this. It's Coumadin. So if you take in Coumadin, because it affects the liver, so it makes coumadin less effective. That means if you're taking this medication, you're taking coumadin, you, you need more dose of coumadin to be therapeutic, and therefore patient bleed. You will be overdosing, bleeding effect. Okay? And so that's one medication. That's things you have, and that's why it can become a problem. And therefore... When they give you to that, you know, my seven is your best friend. You use cab bath. Cab So this is what you use. This is another medication, seizure medication that is better. It has a better profile. Um, it doesn't have too much side effects like that. Um, so most people prefer this um, than... Uh, Phenotone. Guess what? You are not out of the wood yet. The examiner will try to trick you with this. This one, you also have to know a granulo, a granulocyte, cytosis. 
And that also is a B sharp moment, sepsis. They will go into sepsis if they have small infection. So you have to watch them. If they're taking carbamazepine, they have urinary symptoms, any nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, you got to see them. B sharp. That's a B sharp moment for this medication and a B sharp moment for that. And that is all you need to know uh, for this medication and try to make it simple, straightforward things that they're going to ask you. If you show up on the question, even if you go to a key bank and go look for it, this is the, what they're going to ask you. And those are the most important. Take care of yourself, continue charging and all the best of luck. And I want to hear good news. So um, if you guys can send me messages um, through the YouTube and the comment in the video so that we can know how we're doing. Um, that would be really much appreciated. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.